Will the left finally wake up and realise that there is a problem with Muslim political extremism in Britain? Jonathan Ashworth lost his seat and with it a potential cabinet position. He lost to an independent candidate who was supported by a man who is now facing terrorism charges. That man shot this video unrelated to the charges against him, I must say, accosting Ashworth in the street. Do you condemn Netanyahu? Yes or no? You see, I am not going to have these guys. I'm just a simple question. Do you yeah. condemn Netanyahu? So Labour has been reluctant to call out the Islamic political issue in the past. Well, now it's hurting them. I have never known a campaign of such vitriol, such bullying, such intimidation built on the foul and obnoxious lie that I was responsible for genocide, that I had the blood of Gazan children on my hands. This is the campaign that was run by a minority of bullies. A campaign was organised nationally by a national organisation called The Muslim Vote, whose campaign was clear on their website, punish MPs. Well, he's not alone. Here's Shabana Mahmood, now the Justice Minister. I don't think it's acceptable to make threats to people. I don't think it's acceptable to send masked men outside a meeting of women uh, with the hope of scaring them and forcing them out. I don't think it's acceptable uh, to start saying, don't vote for someone, they're not a Muslim. I don't think it's acceptable to shout infidel to activists in the street. That is a whole other level of um, uh, violent, uh, vile politics. Mm, well, quite. And we all remember this from Labour frontbencher Jess Phillips, don't we? It was an absolutely horrible campaign, the most mm. aggressive, most intimidatory, uh, not just of me, but of the people in my constituency, people being intimidated, people being told that God uh, will judge them if they vote a certain way, which is an electoral offence. Um, and, um, yeah, it's been pretty awful. Some of my activists had their tyres slashed on election day. Mm. Not really naming the problem, though, are they? And look, here's Tangam Debonair, who was going to be Digital Culture, Media and Sports Secretary before she lost her seat to the Greens. She's outlined a bit of her experience. It's easy to craft a narrative that goes, your MP didn't vote for a ceasefire if your own party hasn't said we voted twice for a ceasefire and publicly. And seeing billboards vandalised saying you enabled genocide, no, no, I really haven't. The people who put you at risk are the people who chased down the street after some of my colleagues, who put pictures of me and genocidal liar or whatever it was. They threatened me. The people who stood outside Labour Party meetings and other events, they threatened democracy. But her solution to this, and this is what I think many people find incredibly frustrating, is that she thinks that Labour needed to do more to just explain itself to these people. If the party doesn't want to look to those issues of what did we actually say about Gaza? Keir was working as a future Prime Minister on getting back to the peace plan. I'm so proud of that, but where was that written? I was saying it on the doorstep. And he didn't say it. But we didn't hear it, so the party's got a problem there, I think. But the party failed to deal with them properly. I think the lack of a strong narrative had consequences. I mean, come on, really? And as far as the establishment media goes, in the run-up to the election, Channel 4 went out and found a rather fruity guy canvassing for reform who said some horrific things. And then that led the news agenda for days. I've been calling out the problem that those Labour MPs have faced for months. Do you remember this from outside the office of Russianara Ali MP months and months ago? Why, why are you here? Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Labour courted these people. They ignored all the warnings. Now they're complaining about it because they've turned against them. The solution cannot and must not ever be appeasement.